Hey guys, what's going on? So I'm going to do an updated guide to my store farming guide for legendaries and monthly events. Um, kind of the same order going on, but we added on Doc Ock, so I just kind of wanted to change it up the best I could. But essentially the order that I'm recommending, and this is not necessarily how you will unlock these characters, but this is my recommendation that if you have access to... Um, let's say Black Bolt, for example, takes Asgardians to unlock. If you have access to farming all five Asgardians, I would I would then prioritize for Black Bolt. Whatever you're prioritizing, um, I would probably just get them to at least five stars so you can unlock them. Six for Phoenix, but then I would drop them and move on to Black Bolt as soon as possible. So if you're farming for Star Lord, get your Guardians or Ravagers up to level five, and then if if like you know you get that Hella node finally available, then go for Black Bolt. Um, I hope that makes sense, but uh, basically what we have here is my priority if I were to start over of where I would prioritize farming these characters and which order I would prioritize farming them. Not necessarily how you will get them because Magneto is a lot easier to get now than Black Bolt is. So if you get Magneto along the way, that's fine. But um, I'm just saying if you have access to these characters or to farming for these characters, that's where I would go. But our order is Black Bolt, Ebony Maw, Phoenix, Doc Ock, Invisible Woman, Shuri, Taskmaster, Ma Taskmaster represents Payday, Magneto, Star-Lord, Nick Fury, Nobu rep represents Hand Catalyst, Black Panther represents uh, Chaos Theory, and then Spider-Man represents Block Party. The reason why I think, uh, I do think Block par Party is important somewhere along the lines of Chaos Theory and importance. Um, but I know that comes around once every two months, so you can kind of put that on the back burner just because it doesn't come around as often. Um, and so my reasoning for Black Bolt over Ebony Maw is you need Black Bolt to get Ebony Maw. Uh, Ebony Maw can counter Phoenix, but Phoenix, Phoenix can be Ebony, Ebony Maw. Um, I just think Doc Ock, what he does for Sinister Six, doesn't you know doesn't overtake x-men um i think invisible woman is better than shuri i think taskmaster over mag taskmaster over magneto or the mercenary event over magneto just because you need gold um and then the last those last three legendaries aren't really too exciting or too necessary for any teams i know star lord's in good good in dark dimensions too but there's a lot of options for dark dimensions too and then uh, I like ABCs, you know, and SPCs are really important then. I would say go for promotion credits for Red Stars, and then, like I said, Spider-Man, or the block party is, you know, comes around once every two months. Um, so let's get into it. We're going to start off, we're going to go through the easiest stores to the hardest stores. And when I say easiest, I mean the shortest farms to the longest farms. All right, so let's start with Blitz. So here's your Blitz farm. Again, it's in the order that was uh, there before. Rhino, Spider-Man, Rhino can get you Invisible Woman because Invisible Woman requires Sinister Six. Uh, Shuri requi requires Spider-Verse. So you can use uh, Rhino just for Invisible Woman, but you can use Rhino, Sp Spider-Man, and Miles for Shuri. And I would actually recommend this route. Again, Blitz farms are super easy to get through. Also remember that Domino is farmable in Blitz Orbs. So I think if you are a brand new player and don't have any of these characters are unlocked or only have a few unlocked, I would say focus on Blitz Orbs just because you can get Domino that way too. Then Merc, Merc Riot Guard um, for the Mercenary event, and also they're a good defense team. Toad will help you unlock Magneto. Then you have Mantis, Gamora, and Boomer, which should hopefully help you unlock Star-Lord. I would say don't really level up Boomer because you can kind of raise up Rocket or Groot or one of these other Guardian characters to unlock him and just take your Boomer to like, honestly, you can take him to like level 50 and tier 8. Don't put any purple gear into them. You'll have tons of purple, or you'll have tons of blue gear later on anyway, so it's not really a waste. Then Cree Royal Guard for Nick Fury, Luke Cage for Block Party, and then these last five you can prioritize in whatever way you want. A Monstrosity I think should definitely be your last character farm. Um, if you are trying to get a Marauders team going, then definitely go for Strife over Thing. You can honestly go for Strife over like Cree Royal Guard or Mantis or any of them, honestly. Um, but I, the, th the reason I have Thing up there is just because Dr. Doom's coming out. I, if you're looking at this guide, you're probably not really close to getting Dr. Doom, but I'm just giving my thoughts on uh, you know which kind of will have more priority. Dr. Doom will work with any team, but I think um, just because he has that Fantastic Four tag that he'll probably get, Thing will get the most benefit from being on a Dr. Doom team. What I, we're talking about semantics with Dr. Doom. A lot of people won't have access to him for a while. Um, so honestly, it would probably be Strife just because Marauders is a better team. But again, that's my rationale. Ant-Man finally has Pym Tech. Crossbones, I think Crossbones works. Uh, I think Baron Zemo's Hydra is better than Red Skull's Hydra. So that's why I have Crossbones over Scientist and Trooper. Uh, Scientist and Trooper, you can swap in whatever order. It doesn't really matter for them. 
Rescue, I just don't see a lot of value with Power Armor. I mean, they're still pretty decent, but for the most part, I think they've fallen off. Then A Monstrosity, finally our last one. Uh, again, like I said, Blitz is going to be your quickest farm. The longest farm in games are characters. Uh, if you start from zero and try to get up them up to uh, seven stars, it will take you about 270 days. That's about three shards per day. I know it doesn't quite work like that, but that's if you're only farming them from campaign nodes and not from you're not opening orbs or anything like that but 270 days max for them um that's again no orb openings but that would be similar to characters like this that are on screen because you can get these characters out of orb openings too um but that's it for blitz like i said you can't really get any black bolt characters you can't get any ebony, ebony maw characters you can't get any phoenix characters uh you can get domino for doc ock but like I said, that's not really farmable. It's just kind of more luck with orbs, um, but it's definitely doable. I have my domino at seven stars. All right, let's move on to raid. That's our second easiest farm. So we have Thor for Black Bolt. Uh, we have Ronin for Phoenix. We have Mysterio for Invisible Woman and Shuri. Then you have Killmonger and Merc Soldier for the Payday event. Then you have Cyclops and Sabretooth for Magneto. Rocket and Stitcher for Star-Lord. Cree Oracle for Nick Fury, Hand Sentry for Catalyst, Shield Trooper for Iron Man. I didn't throw Iron Man on that prior prior list, but um, just because he is, you know, access to Iron Man is a lot easier than those other ones. Then Hydra Grenadier, I think, um, I think that uh, Baron again, Baron Zemo's team is probably better than Power Armor, um, so I kind of put him in front of War Machine. I know some people are actually using Namor on that Baron Zemo team. Some people are not. Um, but I, that's why I kind of have my uh, War Machine before Namor. Either way, could swap because you could use Namor on that Baron Zemo team. And then finally, Aim Infector. Aim Infector is pretty useless. But essentially, you know, Shield Trooper can help you unlock Iron Man if need be. But um, I'm not really, I wouldn't really worry about it. But he's there. I put him there just because. Um, I will say, I think you should go Raid Orbs if you're starting brand new. But if you're going to go down this path, then definitely go for individual characters. Um, hopefully you have raid credit saved up by then. You naturally kind of get raid orbs by raiding. Um, so I think I, I do think this is your second easiest farm. The hardest farm in game, at least in my perspective, is the arena store. Just because a lot of people, I'm almost a thousand days in and I still don't have my arena store finished. Um, so it's, it is a not a long farm, but the rate at which they're adding characters is kind of overpassing how much credits we earn um at least we're not getting an abundance of credits at least most people who aren't finishing top 10 or top 50 all the time um, i know some people are finishing top 50 and have been doing it for a while and still don't have them all unlocked but uh, i just think this is your easiest because you get raid orbs naturally you can farm these characters individually sucks it's not like the blitz store where you can get whoever you want besides domino um, but yeah i think uh, this is the order you want to go. Again, it's one of those things you really shouldn't be going for Thor or for Asgardians until you have access to that Hela node. I um, mean, and you should be going for whichever characters you can get, so such as Shuri or Invisible Woman, because those are pretty easy legendaries. Um, but yeah, let's move on to War. So War is a trickier store than most, um, just because you know it's really hard to get the spawns in there there's a ton of war characters that are useless or are farmable through campaigns so these are the six that you should only focus on if you want to focus on them two of them are, are required for legendaries carnage and mr sinister are great in this game pyros somewhat but he actually there are three characters that can help you get a legendary but i would not recommend going pyro um, in the war store trying to farm magneto um, sif is used to unlock black bolt x23 is used to unlock doc doc ock and and magneto because she has the x-men tag so that's too bang for your buck um like i said we have toad in here we had say we had toad and blitz we had saber tooth and cyclops in the raid store we have x23 in our war store so that puts you at four characters and you're getting five shards daily for, with wolverine so i think you really shouldn't worry about pyro um carnage again he's on symbiotes which are a great new team if you don't have carnage unlocked i would say go for carnage if you don't have mr sinister unlocked i would say go for mr sinister and then pyro and graviton aren't really that exciting anymore but um this is the order that i would farm if you have extra war credits which honestly you might not now because all the new gear pieces and stuff but um i think for the most part this is the route you want to go for them um again let me know if you guys change your mind you may want to go x20 well no, because Negasonic is in a later node, so I would say just focus on Sif first and get her ready for Black Bolt, but um, yeah, th that pretty much sums up our War Store, and then finally we have our Arena Store. So this is kind of, um, I'm not really, 
I, the placement that I did is the order that I presented, but I think we can make an argument for Corvus being ahead of some of these characters, but this is more for legendary farming. So Heimdall is used for Black Bolt, Quake and Crystal are going to be used for Ebony Maw along with Black Bolt, Mordo is used for Phoenix, Deadpool is used for the Mercenary event, and for Doc Ock, Vulture is there for Invisible Woman and Shuri, then you have Juggernaut and Blob, if you don't go the Cyclops, Toad, uh, Sabretooth, Wolverine, and uh, X-23 route, they're there. Hand Archer's there for the Nobu event. I actually did not use Hand Archer just because I farmed up Hand Assassin for Phoenix. I know some people are deciding to not do that and go for Hela instead because Phoenix requires Mystic Villain controllers. And Baku's there for the Chaos Theory. Then Daredevil, Drax. Uh, Daredevil's there for the uh, Black Party. Drax is there. I kind of have him there just in case you want to use him for unlocking Star-Lord. Shield Security is there for unlocking potentially uh, Iron Man. You can also use Quake to unlock Iron Man because she's a shield character. Then I have Corvus Glaive. I, I just basically rank these on where their most valuable team is. Um, if you don't really care about the Catalyst event or Chaos Theory or Block Party, then obviously bump up Corvus Glaive, and if you are already unlocked Magneto or know the characters you're going to use to unlock Magneto, then go move up Corvus Glaive just because Black Order is our best faction team in game and our best team in game still. Then I would say prioritize Human Torch, Scarlet Witch, Hydra Armor Guard, uh, Hydra Armor Guard for that Red Skull team, and then Aim Infector is really, or uh, Aim Research is really not that solid anymore. Um, I know some people use Aim for Gamma Raids. But for the most part, you can get by without her just using Scientist, Scientist Supreme. She just has a little bit of extra health. But again, this is our order for Arena. Again, you can make the you can make the case for Corvus being up there. But if you're, I would say prioritize getting through all the legendaries or getting through the top legendaries at least, um, because kind of the back half of legendaries, other than Nick Fury, are all pretty easy to farm, such as Star Lord and Magneto. Um, but that's going to do it for this video. Uh, let me know um, if you disagree with this list. Let me know if I have my priorities messed up. Again, I want to know where you think I'm wrong, where you think I'm right. Again, um, prioritize whoever, who you can farm and then focus on what's available. Um, so like I said, if you don't have that Hella node to unlock Black Bolt, then you should probably go for Shuri or Invisible Woman or Phoenix even because you can use Hand Assassin for Phoenix over Hella. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I do want to mention on that war store, don't farm Nobu, don't farm Shield Operative, don't farm Cable. Um, I would say if you are about 5 shards short or 10 shards short of Doc Ock when he comes around and you you see Cable there, you can probably do that. But you, that should not be your main farm for Cable or Nobu or those characters. Just the, the, the six that I presented, I think you should go for over them. But like I said, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you think I should make updates in the future about this. Uh, let me know if you think I'm wrong. Let me know if you think I'm right. Um, I do want to say that on Thursday, when Ghost first release Blitz happens, I'm going to do a live stream right when the event, right when her Blitz starts. Unless, uh, unless there's another event out that I might record a video real quick, then we'll do the Blitz for that. Um, but I just want you guys to be on the lookout for that. That'll be 7 p.m. Eastern. So come join me. My fiance will join us for a little bit too. So feel free to join us. But that's going to do it for this video. On this channel, I do guides. I do giveaways. I do orb openings. I do all sorts of Marvel Strike Force stuff. So make sure you're subscribed. Hit the like button. Thank you guys for watching. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.